I need a haircut. So when I first got into video making, all I had was a Canon T5 and a kit lens. That's it. No stabilizers, no tripod, no fancy lenses, just the body and a low quality lens. It was sold to me for about like 300 bucks, probably closer to 280. Thanks, Brian. All I really did back then was vlogging where I would, I would hold the camera in front of my face, walk around and then tell you about my day. So you'll notice in those vlogs, because it's handheld, the footage is very shaky. If I was on the go enough and this thing's shaking, that could be very annoying and very disorienting for the viewers. Earlier this year, I came across this YouTube video by a guy named Parker Walbeck, and this guy launched my obsession with how to make cinematic looking videos. He explained over and over again the need to stabilize your camera. Now hold on, yes, it does depend on the content, the style of the video, the mood of the scene, but generally speaking, if Infinity War was shot completely handheld, I would get motion sickness. Now Parker's weapon of choice when it came to stabilizing his camera was the glide cam. I've never seen one before and this was my first time hearing about it, so I looked it up and now I have one. Here's how it works. You mount the camera to the top of the cheese plate. And there's a bunch of holes here because I have to figure out where the camera's center of mass is. Based on its location, I mount that to the center of the glide cam. Now I have a quick release plate here in a fixed position because I always use the same body and same lens when I fly the glide cam. So I rarely have to reposition its center of gravity. Once mounted, I'm going to do a drop time test and all it is is I'm going to test how long the glide cam takes to go from a horizontal position to a vertical position. And this is testing to see if the weight on top of the glide cam is equal to the weight of the bottom of the glide cam. Now I could adjust the weight on the bottom by adding or removing these weight plates depending on what I need. If the plates are going to make too much of a change, I could make smaller adjustments by telescoping this bottom piece. Whoops, I just took it off but this will telescope up and down, making it longer or shorter. And based on the leverage, that's going to make the bottom of the glide cam heavier if it's longer or lighter if it's shorter relative to the top based on where the fulcrum is. Okay, now that that's said, I now have to make micro adjustments to the top to balance the whole system. And what I mean by balance is the whole setup should be completely vertical and not leaning too far forward, not too far back, not too far to the left, and not too far to the right. Now, once I get this thing completely balanced, I should be able to move it in any direction and it'll stay vertical. Now, because of wind resistance and gravity, this thing won't stay balanced on its own. So I use my offhand to finesse the bottom pole and balance it as I move around. This setup is what has allowed me to go from shots like this to this. 